Banks are getting desperate for your money. They want you to deposit as much money as you have into their banks in order to secure the financial system of America. There has been a threat recently done on the banking system with the whole Silicon Valley bank debacle and a lot of small and regional banks are seeing some of their deposits start to decline because of what happened. Even larger banks are trying to woo their customers into depositing money by offering different incentives and promotions. And and this is sparked obviously by the bank run that happened with Silicon Valley Bank that a lot of customers saw the threats and the weaknesses of this bank and started withdrawing their money out of those accounts and putting them somewhere else. And so small banks and larger banks are seeing a lot of customers moving their money out of banks into other investment vehicles that earn them a higher interest rate and maybe a little bit more secure. In today's video, we're going to talk about the threat that's happening on the banking system with different interest rate hikes and different fears that are looming around this sector. Be sure to like, comment down below your thoughts of what's happening in the banking system. What do you predict happening in this economy during this year? And please be sure to subscribe. The first thing I wanna talk about is why are people taking their money out of banks and why are banks trying to woo their customers back to them? Ever since the bank run that happened with Silicon Valley Bank, like I explained earlier today, people are seeing that keeping their money in the bank is not always the most secure thing. Yes, the FDIC did insure a lot of those depositors, even people with accounts over $250,000, but would the FDIC insure it for all banks? Let's say there's another bank run. Let's say many other banks experience this. Will the Fed secure everyone's deposits even for accounts over 250,000, that's not 100% guaranteed. And with the Fed hiking interest rates, a lot of customers, a lot of depositors are seeing, hey, my savings account at this bank is just giving me 0.02%. I can at least put my money into a T-bill with the treasury department and earn a much higher interest rate on my money. I could put my money into a money market account, into a CD. I could put it into a mutual fund and earn higher amounts. Now, with some of these vehicles, you are not FDIC insured, but some of them you are. You could still at least get your money back if you hold your money for the length of the term. So now let's look at different articles to go into more details of what's happening in the banking system. All right, so here in this article is saying that US banks are trying to woo depositors by offering signing bonuses to open new accounts. So the promotions are running at the time when the failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank last month spooked customers, promoting them to move 100 19 billion dollars out of smaller institutions. Institutions like Capital One is advertising a hundred dollar bonus for opening new savings account and keeping more than ten thousand dollars in it for 90 days. The offer ramps up to a bonus of a thousand dollars for deposits of over a hundred thousand dollars. And so you can see that's a one percent gain. That's a one percent interest rate if you hold it for over 90 days, which is not that bad for keeping your money in just for three months and earning one percent off of it. Here in this article, they are also also stating that banks are trying to retain their customers by employing other techniques such as explaining to customers the rules around deposit insurance, offering different products, or emphasizing ties to local communities. So a lot of these smaller banks and regional banks are seeing what's happening in the economy. They're probably seeing more people getting their money out and putting it into larger banks, and they're just trying to explain to them, hey, you all, Yes, you can do whatever you want to do with your money, but we are FDIC insured up to this amount. And on top of that, if you keep your money here, you keep your money in the community. And so they're really trying to advertise that in order to keep and retain as many customers as they can. Let's look at some stats. So the Fed data showed smaller banks defined as any lender that is not among the largest 25 US banks ranked by assets saw their deposits stabilized in the week of March 22nd, down just $1.1 billion from the previous week on a non-seasonal adjusted basis. They're starting to see their deposit stabilized because initially there was a decrease in deposits, but it's still down 1.1 billion dollars from the previous week. That compares with $185 billion of deposits that were yanked out of smaller lenders by panic customers during the whole debacle of Silicon Valley Bank. That said, the Fed data showed deposits at smaller banks were still down some $216 billion during the week ending March 22nd from a December high. So if you compare December high and what's happening now, smaller banks are still down $216 billion. You are seeing an outflow happening 
happening from these banks into other areas, right? Now, we need to highlight some other good things. The Independent Community Bankers of America and Industrial Group said some of its members had actually gained deposits in recent years as consumer and small businesses sought out banks with strong ties to the local community or local markets. And so you're still seeing a lot of people using these local banks because they want to invest in real estate around the area and they know they can probably get better rates, better terms, dealing with a bank locally. But you can even see large banks losing assets or losing deposits. It says, meanwhile, large U.S. banks lost out on $96.2 billion in deposits in the week ending March 22nd, the Fed data show. Several analysts attributed to decline to depositors, moving their cash to high yielding money market funds. And that's what I stated. People are saying, hey, yes, Bank of America, the interest rates are a little bit higher, but it's not as high as keeping my money in a money market account. And yes, maybe a savings account is definitely more secure more liquid, but you can earn three to four times as much on your money, keeping it in a money market account that is deemed somewhat safe. But even when all of this happening, the decline in deposits haven't stopped them from extending credit to households and businesses. Tighter funding conditions for banks have not translated into any notable deceleration in aggregated US banking sector loan growth relative to February levels. So here it's saying, yeah, yeah, you are seeing a decline in deposits, but we are still issuing out as much loans as we can possible right? People are still going to banks to get loans for this, for that. And even though the rules are more stringent, right? They're more strict. People are still able to get loans and banks are still giving people money. We'll see how that plays out later on. So since the start of March, $286 billion has flowed into money market funds on pace for the biggest month since the depths of COVID, right? Because when COVID happened, people were taking their money out of the bank and holding it in cash or something else, right? Because uh, people were fearful and things of that nature. And so you're seeing that on pace to be the biggest month since that whole COVID thing, a whole pandemic and whatnot. Early in 2022, when the Fed started its ongoing pace of increase, since then, people have pulled out $1 trillion $1 trillion from vulnerable banks and put them into money market funds and bigger institutions. JP Morgan data shows of that amount, half was reallocated after the collapses SVB. So $1 trillion started to come out of people's banks since the start of 2022, because people knew that the Fed was going to hike interest rates and people were like, okay, interest rates are higher. That means saving yields are higher. Money market accounts are going to be higher. T-bills are going to be higher. I'm going to move my money over there. And so that happened throughout 2022. There was less and less deposits. That was the first initial threat happening in Silicon Valley Bank back then, late in 2022, they saw a decrease in deposits. But now what happened in March since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, out of that trillion dollars, half of it was done essentially within the past month or two, which is crazy to think that $1 trillion was taken out, withdraw from different banks, and most of it was done this year, and we're only in the fourth month of 2023. All right, right here it says closely related to money market funds are similar accounts offered by banks. They're actually are even safer, offering FDI insurance up to $250,000 per depositors. For an everyday person looking to follow the trend toward money markets, accounts may be a better option, even if funds sometimes yield more. So here they're saying that there are some different banks that offer just high interest rates on their savings account, and they're actually insured $250,000. Some money market accounts are not insured that much. And yes, you can get maybe a point or two higher of interest increases, but it's not as safe or guaranteed as a savings account. So you could possibly explore these different options. All right, so here, looking at the deposit of all commercial banks, you're seeing over the past 40 years, 50 years, it just goes up. And even in 08, 07, with the financial crisis, there was not a huge like decline happening. And so it actually just had a steady increase. Let's go to it right now. Okay, so if you see here, there wasn't a huge decline. There was an increase actually happening, but there wasn't a decline. And then this is what happened. There was a huge jump in 2020. And I think that was mainly caused by the government putting money to people bank accounts because of stimulus. And so you see this huge jump happening in people's accounts. And that's probably what happened too, because I believe there was a stimulus check in 08 also. But something interesting is you're seeing a decline happening, right? You're seeing this decline in deposits. If we look at the last five years, the last year, you're seeing that since August, essentially, there's just been a decline in deposits in commercial banks. And you see this huge drop, see, since the 1st of March, boom. Now that's a steep drop. Like you don't see that steep drop happening anytime in history, really, like a big of a drop like that. 
yeah, you do see some huge increases, but you don't see a steep drop like that. And so a lot of people are saying, hey, you know, this financial sector is really weak right now, right? It's about to face like some huge issues if it drops that much in just a few days. So I think this chart is very interesting to understand what's happening in the economy. All right, you all, let me know your thoughts on different banks trying to get deposits more and just trying to not have people be fearful and different things like that. Do you think we should or we shouldn't be too worried about this? How are you investing? Are you taking some of your money out of your savings account if you're just keeping it there or are you investing in other investment vehicles or what do you predict happening? I would like to know down below. All right, make sure you all like, subscribe, comment down below and I'll talk to you all later.